look, this is inevitable. It was going to happen. And if the, the PAC 12 was going to blow up taking on Oregon and Washington just makes the conference stronger from a football standpoint. None of this makes any sense from a non revenue sport. Um, none of it, none of it, but football is what brings in the revenue to help pay for the non revenue sports. So that's the only place where it makes any kind of sense. But in the end, are they are they making money or not? You know, when after you, you factor in the cost of of travel and all that, um, you're sending the the tennis team out to take on, you know, Washington. I'm not sure if that's cost effective or not when all is said and done. But apparently, it must be. To <laughs> oh, you some mean extent. in the big picture? Yeah, yeah. In the big picture, it must be um, getting the, the Washington and Oregon to come in on the cheap a little bit. Because they're not getting paid as much. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, good. You get the Pacific Northwest. There's definitely a market out there. Just from a pure entertainment value as a football fan, as a college football fan, it's great because you're adding more strength to the conference. But that's the only way place where it makes sense. It makes sense for a fan, and that's it. But it will refuse to – if they go in the Big Ten, if they decide to – continue their plan and forego the divisions. I don't get it. I don't know how they can. I don't, I, they, I mean, this, this is what I was really excited about because they, now they have to go divisions. They have to go back. And that, that, what's crazy is that three, that six, six, three model that they had in place when they had 16 teams with USC and UCLA, we're probably never going to see that. That whole big schedule lease where you played six teams one year, six teams the next and had three protected rivals. We're, we're never going to no, see it. No, no, of course not. So now I get to figure it all out again. Um, but I, I imagine they had contingency plans. Everybody, everyone's got their own ideas of what, of what should happen. But I, I think what comes out of it is that, and what fans care about here locally, is are you protecting the rivalries? That's what you care about. You know, Michigan wants to make sure they protect Ohio State. Michigan State wants to make sure you protect Michigan, uh, and, and to a degree, vice versa. Um and, and go at it that way. And as long as you're well, going to guarantee the divisions, that's going to happen. And the other thing is you didn't want to, just looking at it from the rivalry standpoint with Michigan and Ohio State, you didn't want to diminish what that rivalry is because it became such a great rivalry because it used to mean something. It used to mean, not that it doesn't now, but under, follow me for a little bit. It used to mean whoever won that game, won the Big Ten, won the right to go to the Rose Bowl. And that's why it meant something back in the seventies and into the eighties, and then of course in the nineties you switch up, you get the college, uh, the uh, the BCS and the college football playoff, and things have changed. Where the Rose Bowl doesn't mean really anything anymore. I mean, it means something, but not what it was because it's no longer our Big Ten champion going there automatically. So, what this does is this keeps this game relevant. If you had gone to a divisionless football, you could have seen instances where perhaps Michigan and Ohio State play at the end of the season and then they play the following week in a Big Ten championship and it would have meant that that game at the end of the season meant nothing. And you don't want the game being played at Michigan or in Columbus to mean nothing. You want it to mean something. And to, and not to have the game, at, and now it would be in Indianapolis or whatever, and, and, it, and that's where it matters. It sucks because it would have taken away the importance at the end of the season, and you want to protect that rivalry, and there's a reason the rivalry is so great. So at least this looks like you're going to protect that by having divisions. How many? I don't know. Is it going to be four divisions of five? Is it going to be two of ten? I don't know. Well, right now it would be two of nine um, unless they had two more teams, which they may do. They have to go to divisions. They have to. First of all, if you have an 18-team league, and you are not playing during the regular season. I mean, I, I would think they're going to max out at 10 conference games and determining who makes the playoffs when 18 teams are playing 10 games each, there are going to be way too many no plays, way too many no plays. That there would be some inequities in just determining your conference champion. So you have to go back to divisions. Here's the other thing about if they don't have divisions is the only scheduling model that would really make sense to where you try, because you'd have yourself, whoever, whatever school you are, and then 17 other teams. And they want you to play everybody 
in your career. So you would play eight teams, eight other teams one year, and eight the next with one protected rivalry game, which means Michigan, Michigan State wouldn't play every year. Right? I mean, if you add that, there, there's no way that the conference, the conference commissioner, a.k.a. Fox, NBC, ESPN, right? Or I guess not ESPN anymore, but your Fox, NBC, CBS, which are now running college football. Don't be fooled. They're running college athletics. The TV networks would never have Michigan, Ohio State not be protected because it's a cash cow. So the 881 model would mean Michigan and Michigan State would play every other year. So divisions make sense. You're going to have to split up a rivalry because you have the four Pac-12 schools. You have Nebraska, Iowa, Minnesota. That makes up seven. And then what? Wisconsin and Northwestern, which would break up Northwestern, Illinois. But I don't know how else they do it. They could do Wisconsin and Illinois, Wisconsin, Purdue, which would break up Purdue, Indiana. So you're going to have to break up, but that's – relatively small change in terms of what they 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 have to go division. Are we expecting another shoe to drop and announce a couple more teams in the Pac-12 coming I over? I don't know. Um what is Doug Karsh hearing? I'm not hearing anything more. I mean last week Tony Petit literally a week and a half ago Tony Petit was asked about expansion. He said we're done. We're focusing on USC and UCLA coming in and one week later they had Washington and Oregon because everything moves so rapidly. Here's the thing about college athletics is that as much as we know football runs the show, two of the absolute elite institutions in America are sitting out there on the West Coast without a home. And by the way, they're not bad in everything. Stanford and Cal? Yeah. If if the Big Ten, if you if you're a university president and you even are even if you're just pretending that academics matter, you'd go get Stanford and Cal. Well, I actually believe in the university president's eyes, they do. They may, but it doesn't matter for athletics. So where it does matter is it's a San Francisco market. It's a huge TV market. That's where it matters. And, oh, by the way, it happens to be that these are two of the greatest institutions in the country Mm -hmm. in Stanford and Cal. Absolutely, that would make sense if you want to capture that market. And it seems like that's what Big Ten wants to do is, is get all the big markets. There's a hole. Fill the hole. Go get that market. And why not? You know, I think it's just a matter of time before the, the Pac-12 completely impl- – I mean, what, what are we wow, now? Now the Pac-8? Four. They're four. They're Pac-4 right now. Yeah. <laughs> there's the group of four. I'd love to see them get together and say, we still want our automatic bid into the college football playoff. So the who Pac-4. F- <laughs> right. They're like, we're staying. We're staying. We're, staying. We're, we're in, right? So what do you got? You've got – Oregon State, Washington State, Stanford, and Cal. 